Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of video games. We cover all kinds from the mainstream to the indie, so I hope you enjoy your stay, and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. A representative from Gradani is out in Razad Han looking for strong fighters to help deal with the blasphemy that's attacking people out in the Twelves Wood. They haven't been able to even track the thing down, let alone kill it, so they need a little bit of help. Considering how good the Warrior of Light is in battle, she would be the perfect person to join the fight, and since she has a serious connection to the people of Gradania, she makes her way over to see what she can do to help out. Connie sent us happy to see that you were the one that answered the call. But since she knows you definitely have other random quests to complete, she immediately gets you up to speed on the current situation. Not long after the blasphemy started to appear in Thavnir, the Gridanians got a report saying that a man whose identity they didn't know transformed into one of the monsters in the middle of the road outside of the city. The thing looked like something out of an old legend so the people decided to name it Gleipnir. Since it first appeared, it's been randomly popping out of the forest and attacking people, then it disappears again before anyone can fight it. And since it's not leaving any tracks at all, they haven't been able to find it. The elementals want the thing out of the forest, but Connie isn't sure how easy it'll be to kill the thing even if her people manage to find it, mainly because everyone who survived one of Gleipnir's attacks have been poisoned, and no matter how small the cut is that the people get, the poison doesn't take long to kill them. The symptoms that the people are getting reminds Connie Senna of the plague called the Creeping Death that had spread through the Twelveswood a very long time ago. The people who got it would get a rash on their skin that looked like a chain. Then they'd die horribly. They had made a cure out of glim shrooms, but by the time they had made it, a lot of people had died. The people of Gridania still remember how bad it was, and if people keep popping up with those symptoms, it will likely cause a panic. So you need to all figure out where the blasphemy is and whether or not the poison that is spreading is actually the creeping death. The problem is none of their magic has done anything to even slow the spread of the poison, so fighting the thing would guarantee that a lot of people would die. Unfortunately, you might not have a choice in the matter, because a call comes in saying that Gleipnir just attacked someone out in the North Shroud. He was gone before the Wood Wellers could get there, but the man he attacked is still alive for now. They're taking him to Falgord Float, so the Warrior of Light and Connie Senna head over there to see if there's anything that can be done for the injured man, and to see if the blasphemy is still in the area. The healer that works in the area has already fixed the man's wounds, but he couldn't do anything about the poison. From the marks he saw on the man's body, he's pretty sure that it really is the creeping death. Connie's gonna give healing it a try, but before she can do that, someone starts screaming about a swarm of Chigos coming from the east. Those bugs were known for carrying the plague, so them popping up along with the infected man has a good chance of pushing the people over the edge, so Connie sends you off to deal with them while she tries to save the dying man. You see the things attacking a merchant who you saved before he gets chewed on, and it's a good thing that you did because he's actually carrying a cure for the plague with him. He had heard about the sick man and figured that he could both help out and make a little bit of money at the same time. Since the sick guy's a heartbeat away from taking a trip to the upper room, the merchant figures that you have a better chance of getting there than he does, so he gives you the medicine for free so you can take it to the guy. You bring the medicine to Connie, but even though it works fast on the actual creeping death, the medicine does less than nothing on whatever the man actually has, and he dies screaming. That makes this situation far worse, because now it's guaranteed that anyone who gets so much as a scratch from the blasphemy will die. The one thing that Connie Senna is sure of after seeing how fast the poison works, is that no regular creature would be able to carry and spread a poison so strong, so the pests that would normally spread a plague aren't really anything to be afraid of. That little bit of knowledge should help keep the people from panicking and turning into monsters themselves. But that still leaves the dangerous and difficult task of tracking down Gleipnir and dealing with the monster without dying. The Woodwellers have been searching everywhere for the thing, and the best info that they have says the beast is somewhere in the South Shroud. Since it's not likely to just stay there, you all head out there right away to try and catch it. Since Connie's sister Raya is constantly hanging around the area, the Elder Seed Seer figures that her sister might have seen something useful. Raya knows all about Gleipnir since the thing has been killing so many people in the area that has made them all scared to leave Camp Tranquil. They've even gone so far as to accuse her of neglecting her duties and letting the monster do what it wants when she's supposed to be protecting the people. 
She wants to see if the elementals can help, but they're not as strong as they used to be, and every time Connie talks to them, they don't sound like they're in the best mental state. They likely won't be again until Gleipnir is gone, which makes them useless when it comes to dealing with the thing, which kind of seems par for the course. The elementals seem to always be in distress when their power could be useful. Raya is pretty sure you'll need them to deal with Gleipnir, so she figures she'll grab her brother and try to calm them down so they can help, while Connie lets the people of Camp Tranquil know that the Seed Seers are working on solving the problem, with the help of the Warrior of Light, of course. Some of the Gridanians were actually debating leaving the area and moving to Ulda, which means they've clearly never been to the place because dealing with the blasphemy is far easier and safer than being a refugee in Ulda, or a citizen for that matter but Connie does manage to convince some of the people to stay calm for long enough to let her handle the situation. Unfortunately, the words of a leader who interacts with her people almost as much as the elementals do aren't all that comforting to the ones who've actually seen Gleipnir and his victims firsthand. The monster had attacked a group of civilians on the road, and while they did get away, one of them got cut. Connie tries to heal one of them, but it doesn't work, and when the man realizes that he's gonna die, he turns into a monster. Seeing him turn makes his friend turn too, and you're forced to put both of them down. Having people die right in front of them right after Connie tried to tell the people that everything would be okay doesn't really do all that much when it comes to lifting spirits, which means more people are now at risk of transforming. Even worse, there are still no signs of Gleipnir, so Connie decides to try to get some help from the elementals after all by talking to the Great One. But calling on him is not as simple as just dialing his number, so she heads off to get what she needs for the ritual while you head back to the city. While she's working on that, things get worse. Gleipnir starts attacking more and more people, which is making more people scared, which causes more of them to turn into blasphemies. To make matters worse, a call comes in saying that the beast is in the middle of a fight with some wood whalers near the guardian tree where the Great One sleeps. If it destroys the tree, that will make getting help from the elementals all but impossible, so you race off to see what you can do. By the time you get there, the soldiers have already turned into monsters, and you're forced to put them down before you can make your way to the guardian tree. The tree hasn't been damaged, so Connie gets started trying to chat with the Great One. It works, but the thing is so scared that contacting it actually hurts Connie. It wants her to get rid of the monster because it's too scared to do anything while it's there. Which means the elementals are downright useless. Like what's the point of having them around if any time a threat shows up they're too scared to actually help people deal with it? To make the bad day even worse, Gleipnir shows up in person and you finally get to see the monster. The thing is a behemoth with some extra steps, which makes me wonder how did anyone get just a scratch from the thing? Any attack at all from it would probably remove a body part. Gleipnir charges at the tree, and Connie, proving that she's not nearly as useless as some people might think, puts up a shield to hold off the giant monster. It overpowers her, breaking through the shield and knocking her unconscious, which forces the Warrior of Light to step in to fight it. And because I think your abilities are secretly trying to kill you, the Echo takes over and shows you a vision. You see Asumi Yan telling two young Pajal about their purpose of acting as mediators between the elementals and the races of man. The most skilled Pajal take on the title of Seed Seer and work to protect and guide Gridania through the good times and the bad. Isumi doesn't know which of the two children would be worthy of taking that role, but he thinks they're both capable. However, the girl doesn't want to be a Seed Seer at all. She doesn't even want to be a Pajal. Having the horns would kind of suck, but I don't know too many people who would complain about aging as slowly as they do. Being normal is highly overrated, but that's what the girl wants. The boy, not so much. He likes his horns, and he looks at being a Pajal as a gift that he can use to help people, and he thinks that the little girl, who's actually a young Connie Senna, should look at it the same way. She hadn't thought of it like that since it was forced on her, but she's willing to try. Now this vision must have went by fast, because when the Warrior of Light wakes up, Gleipnir still hasn't attacked. He sees Connie lying on the ground and he recognizes her, which makes him leave because he's obviously the boy that was with her in the vision. She was knocked out when her shield broke, but she wasn't hit by Gleipnir's poison so a healer should be able to get her back on her feet. Once she's back on her feet and able to talk, maybe finding out who Gleipnir actually is will be enough to help you figure out how to deal with him. Once Connie Senna's recovered enough to receive visitors, the Warrior of Light and one of her personal guards head to the Conjurer's Guild to talk to her about Gleipnir. Fortunately, she didn't get poisoned when Gleipnir broke her shield because she would have been dead if she had, and she's ready to go back to hunting for the creature. While she might think she's ready to get back out there, Isumi's not gonna let her run off when she's barely gotten back on her feet. She might not be injured on the outside anymore, but there's no way to know if her little chat with the Great One did anything to her. The thing is made of pure ether, and her feeling its fear the way that she did could have had all types of weird side effects. 
She understands that, but Gleipnir has to be dealt with, and she can't do that while she's being kept in a hospital bed. She seems to keep forgetting that she has help, but Asumi has no problem volunteering you to do the heavy lifting. After that last run in with Gleipnir, Connie Sen is pretty sure that you won't be able to beat the monster without some help from the Great One. And even though it may not seem like it, he has a lot of power. During the seventh Umbral Calamity, the Great One created a barrier called the Ermin Hedge that protected the Twelve's wood from most of the damage. Connie figures that if they could get a bit of the Great One's power, it'll be able to shield you all from Gleipnir's poison, which means you'll only have to deal with his giant fangs, claws, muscles, horns, and everything else that makes it deadly. But the rapid death producing incurable poison is by far the worst threat that the thing has, so she figures that appeasing the elementals is the best path to take. That means you'll have to stop the elementals from being so afraid of Gleipnir that they can't do anything. That'll probably require you figuring out why the blasphemy seems to have such a strong desire to see the Great One dead. Connie's been thinking about that too, and considering the fact that blasphemies tend to hold on to some thoughts and feelings they had while they were alive, figuring out who Gleipnir is may lead to those answers. Fortunately, since you had a vision of Gleipnir's past and Connie was in it, once you tell her the particulars of it, she thinks she may know who the blasphemy used to be. Isumi knows too since he trained both Connie Senna and her counterpart Iasura Supin. Unlike Connie, Iasura never knew his family and devoted every waking moment to becoming the perfect Pajal. That made him a far better student than Connie since while he studied, she spent more time sneaking off and doing her own thing. She hated being isolated from regular people and she made it a point to complain about it every chance she got. She would have never made it through a training without the support of Iasura. She had expected them both to become seed seers together, but one day when they were gathering herbs for Isumi, a strange man showed up and asked them to take him to the guardian tree. They didn't have the authority to take anyone to the tree, and the man was a bit weird so Connie told him no, but Iasura took him anyway. Connie of course went and told Isumi, and the two of them headed to the tree where they found the strange man dead and Iasura unconscious. When the young Pajal finally woke up, he was able to tell Connie and Isumi what had happened. The weird man was an adventurer who had wanted fame and fortune like most of them do, and he had tried to take a branch off of the guardian tree. That got him killed, and as punishment for bringing the man there in the first place, the Great One took Iasura's horns. Without them, he was no longer a Pajal, and Izumi was forced to kick him out. After that, he never heard from the boy again. He had tried to find out what happened to him, but he couldn't, even though it seems like he had stayed in the Twelves Wood. Even though he had made a mistake, his one goal had been to help the people of the wood, so even though he couldn't train to be a seed seer anymore, he would have just found another way to help the people. The question is, what could have made him turn into Gleipnir? The last thing he had told Connie before they went their separate ways was that he was going to try to find a way to get forgiveness from the Great One and he figured that the Mughals could help him. They've been in the Twelves Wood longer than just about anyone else, so if anyone knows the inner workings of the minds of the Elementals, it would be them. That means you have to go and talk to the slightly annoying fuzzballs to see if they know anything about Iasura that you can use or if they know how to calm the Great One down enough so he can help you. The Mughals know you well since you've beaten them up a time or two over the years, but you've helped them enough to make them be more than willing to talk to you. As luck would have it, the Mughals were already in the process of trying to figure out how to calm the Elementals since they want the blasphemy gone too. It's been making life a little bit uncomfortable for them too and they're not exactly happy about that. Ryao told them that the first thing that they need to do is get rid of any corruption that they find in the forest so the elementals can have less stuff to worry about. The good news is the Mughals have a lot of hands to throw at any problems since the ones who have been tempered by good King Mogomog have been cured and they have no desire to summon the irritating primal again. And since you're there working on the same issue, you decide to help them do some cleansing. What should be an easy job gets a little bit complicated when one of the members of the Moz Guard realizes that every time he clears up an area, twice as many corrupted sections appear to replace it. With everything going on in the forest, the Elementals are having a hard time remembering how to heal it, but one of the Mughals thinks they can remind them how to do it by performing one of their ancient rituals called the Friending. The name is terrible, which makes sense once you find out that Coop de Coop just made it up because he couldn't remember what it was actually called. He does at least remember how to do it, so there's that. The ritual was first performed before Gridania became the nation that it is today. The founders knew that if they wanted to make a real home in the Twelves Wood, they'd have to ask the Elementals for permission. So a mage got rid of some of the spots that were full of corrupted ether, planted a few small trees in the spots, and prayed over them to show the forest Elementals that they weren't moving in to try to bulldoze the place to make a mall. The Elementals liked the gesture so much that they gave the people the right to build in the wood, and they even blessed them. 
That's why even to this day, every time a Gridanian cuts down a tree, they plant another one. So the Mughals figured that doing the same ritual would help soothe the elemental's emotions. The mage who first came up with the ritual was Joran, the father of the very first Pajal. That's what the elemental's blessing had done, and from then on they would bless a few here by turning them into Pajal and working closely with them. And since the elementals liked them, all of the people of the Twelves would had a great respect for the Pajal. Once they hear that Gleipnir is likely a former Pajal who had lost the blessing all because of a bad decision he made as a child, the Mughals feel a little bad for him. But with what they know about the Blasphemy's poison having a stronger effect on hearers makes sense. It's attacking the people who were blessed by the Twelves would. The very same people who have something that he regrets losing. That also explains why the Elementals are so scared. Gleipnir isn't only after them, it's after the people they care about. That means they need to be pushed to act faster so you and the Mughals head off to do some of the hardest work imaginable, landscaping. Since Gleipnir hasn't been seen in a while, that gives the Mughals time to gather up the plants that you need. Since the Mughals have gathered all of the plants that you'll need for the ritual that'll hopefully get the elementals up and moving again, they're ready for the Warrior of Light to join them and get things started. Since this mission involves healing the forest, Connie Sinner wants to come with you. Isumi finally agreed to let her leave the city, mainly because she wouldn't stop annoying him. Having her there would really help the process, so the Mughals are perfectly fine with her joining the group. Connie can sense the areas where the corruption is the strongest, so you all head to Green's here to get things started. Once the Warrior of Light does her thing and murders the corrupted critters, Connie purifies the area and leads you all to the next spot where you repeat the process. When you finish your corruption hunting, tree planting, scavenger hunt, Connie can sense that the forest has gotten better, but she won't know if what you've done is enough until she goes to the Guardian Tree. Some people see you all and they're curious about what the Elder Seed Seer is doing, so she tells them that she's planting trees and making offerings to help the elementals. While that seems like an important thing to do to her, the people of Gordania are more worried about the people themselves than they are about the elementals. And they're not happy that the woman who's supposed to be leading them spends more time worried about nature than she is with dealing with the threats that are facing the actual people, mainly Gleipnir. What the people don't realize is that Connie's trying to help the elementals so they can help her deal with the monster and save the people. While that may be true, the blasphemy is only the most recent issue that the general public has. They've been dealing with problems constantly, yet the Seed Seers spend more time working with the Elementals than they do with them. Not all that long ago, someone had caught the Creeping Death, the real Creeping Death, not the one that Gleipnir's been giving, and the supposed antidote didn't work. Everyone was sad when the woman died, but her husband Supin took it the hardest. Not long after that, Gleipnir showed up. Hearing that the man was called Supin makes Connie think that they were talking about Iasura, but the people say Supin wasn't this guy's real name. The only person who called him that was his wife. They didn't know why, but after a while the name stuck. The man had been a loner who would show up from time to time, but after he met his wife he became more social. The woman had always been sickly which is why the medicine couldn't help her with the creeping death. It also explains what made Iasura turn into Gleipnir, and this little incident showed Connie that she's going to have to spend more time focusing on the woes of the people than just focusing on the elementals. But she'll have to worry about that after you all deal with Gleipnir. She fully understands why the monster is so focused on destroying the elementals. Had Iasura still been a Pajal, he would have been able to save his wife. Since the Elementals took that from him, he would have been more than a little angry with them, which would explain a whole lot. Now that you all know why this is happening, it's time to put an end to it, but first you have to talk to the Great One, and since you've cleansed the forest, it's time to head to the Guardian Tree. With what you've all done, the Great One's actually calmed down enough to speak through Connie, but he does that to say that he still doesn't have the power to share with the people. But when more people from around the area show up to ask for help, he sees that the people of Gridania haven't broken their covenant with the elementals, so he agrees to give what power he can. He gives the people branches off of the great tree that Connie sends them to link with the oldest trees in the area. That should allow the great one to block Gleipnir's poison. The blasphemy will definitely not just let that happen, so she wants the people to be careful. There's a bit more to the process than just carrying the branches around, but Connie has to deal with that part with the Seed Seer Council. So while the people do the planning and Connie gets ready for the final spell, the Warrior of Light gets her mind ready for the upcoming battle with Gleipnir. Once everyone has gotten all of the branches in place, Connie is ready to use the Great One's power and summon the Ermine Hedge. He had told her how to do it when he was speaking through her, and since the spell was strong enough to protect the Twelve's Wood from a calamity, it should be more than enough to deal with the Blasphemy's poison. To start the spell, there's one last branch that needs to be attached to the oldest tree in the wood, and Connie thinks that the Warrior of Light should do the honors. The tree's in the center of Gridania, so at least it's not that long of a trip, but you still have to climb the thing, which is likely the reason why Connie wanted you to do it instead of her. With the last branch in place, you all head back to the Guardian Tree so the Elder Seed Seer can cast the spell. 
and you all get ready for a fight because Gleipnir is definitely going to show up once she starts. Before she can even start the spell, the beast shows up, which means you'll have to defend Connie for even longer. The monster's poison is extremely potent, but the Warrior of Light fights through it, giving Connie enough time to cast the spell which cures you of the poison and makes you all immune to it. That finally lets you all face the thing in a much more fair fight. One that you win, of course. With the blasphemy dead and everything starting to get back to normal, the Great One is finally back at peace. Now that this not so little adventure is done, Connie has to go back to her regular duties as Seed Seer, but her personal bodyguard thinks she should take a bit of a vacation after all she's been through. That's why it's a good thing that she's in charge and not him, because that would be a terrible idea and she knows it. While the Gleipnir problem has been dealt with, she realizes that as a leader and a Pajal, she has to be more involved with the people of Gridania and not be seen as some distant person who spends all of her time talking to trees. Granted, she would like to take some time to wander around the world like an adventurer, but for now, that'll have to wait. That also means that you'll have to be the one to go to Razad Han and let them know that the mission was accomplished. But the Warrior of Light, considering the way things usually go for her, should have already known that she'd be the one to make the trip since no one cares if she gets to take a break or not. This concludes the story of N. Walker's Tank Roll Quest. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Donate to the channel if you can, and I'll see you all next time.